Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dan McKee, now sitting in the governor's office, and um, we're back, and we're back to talk about small businesses. But I have really the um, the pleasure today to um, introduce uh, our new lieutenant governor, uh, Sabina Matos. And uh, before she, before I bring her on, we'll we'll have a little talk back and forth about you know our transition and the role that uh, our new lieutenant governor is going to play. But very high. Uh, interest in our small business community, and uh, and we'll continue to do that uh, in the governor's office. So today uh, we're very happy that we're going to have our uh, people who are uh, been involved over the last year with me as lieutenant governor, uh, with Matt uh, with Matt Weldon from DLT and Mark Haywood from the from the uh, SBA, and along with uh, Chris Parisi who has been the, uh, the champion uh, of champions for our small business community with the coalition. And we'll give you updates on that. And then Secretary Pryor will, will join us as well. So why don't we, why don't we bring on uh, our Lieutenant Governor? Hey, Hello. Lieutenant Governor, how are you? Good, thank you, Governor. I'm so glad that I'm here with you um, in this, my first live town hall. So thank you, Governor. Yes, well, we've been doing this for months, and I know you have been following the work because we've, you've been we've been talking over the time frame when you were uh, council council president in Providence, and that and my office looks really good. You got that setting up pretty good down there. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be just great. I think the I think the people who are going to be uh, working with us. We had our first joint press conference yesterday. Yesterday, that's right, the first one. I think we did okay, right? <laughs> I think that we did. I think we did fine. I think that people want to hear from their leaders, and this is a way you can do it. And this this forum, we've yeah. used this, and uh, Ben Bob has been a been a host and our producer for for the whole year on multiple different programs, including this virtual business town hall. Uh, it is a good way to connect in, and you're going to see as we go along. I mean, this is the first time we've had it now in about seven weeks, eight weeks. Uh, so it's been a couple of months. So it'll, it'll start gaining traction and you're going to get a great deal of um, information, which which you're really good at, you know, as a former. So introduce a little bit to, uh, you know, the people who are watching, you know, your background and why you're interested in small businesses. And then we can start then you can start run the show like I did. And I'll come back uh, later in the in the program when Chris Preece comes on to talk about the coalition of small businesses and some of the things that we're working on right now. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you, Governor McKee. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to join you in this first uh, town hall conversation uh, with the small business community. Um, so I want to introduce myself to the small business community that take part of this uh, event every week. Uh, I'm a new, um, introduce myself as, an, as an, a first generation immigrant um, here in the United States. I have been uh, in the United States since 1994, um, I came to New York City, stayed there only for a couple of months, then came to Rhode Island uh, to my uncle's house in Oneville. Um, I started um, working and going to school eventually, graduated with a, a degree in communications from Rhode Island College, and I got elected to the Florida City Council in 2010. Since then, I have been doing a lot of work with the small businesses in the community in, of Providence. And I have seen firsthand some of the challenges that the small business have uh, faced, but also have been working with great uh, community partners to make sure that we bring resources to the small business community. Um, through my work in the city council, I have worked with the Center for Women's Enterprise we have been visiting small businesses, uh, letting them know about the resources available. Um, governor McKee, when he was the lieutenant governor, joined me uh, walking uh, the neighborhoods and visiting some of the small businesses in the Oneville area, Manton area, uh, providing them with information and resources uh, to help them be successful. So I'm glad to be here now in this new role, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Uh, 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 we, we've committed to be in all 39 cities and towns in your first 100 days. Uh, as you mentioned yesterday at the press event, we've been in five communities already, different types of communities, whether it's Providence or Jamestown, Wesley, Johnston, we've been in, in there as well. So we're going to continue to do that, Sabina. And it's, uh, it's so great to have you on. And, and I, I've been looking forward to, to uh, continue this program going and, 
I know when we did, we talked during the interview process, uh, you really made a strong commitment to small business, and I wanted to come on and make sure that people knew that. Uh, and so thank you so much for your leadership so far. It's been extraordinary in terms of the way that you've been able to get out with people and, and talk to them and, and put down some of the things that you really want to have happen. But I think more importantly for us as a team, right, is that we're going to show Rhode Island that a lieutenant governor and a governor uh, could be strong partners. They can, they, you know, on the political side, they can campaign together. Uh, on, the, on the government side, we can manage together. And we have the great opportunity right now uh, to show uh, the people of Rhode Island how a, a governor and lieutenant governor can manage together for the, in the best interest of all 39 cities and towns and the communities that make up our communities. I agree, Governor, and I want to thank you for your support and your partnership. And uh, you have been willing to introduce me to the different leaders um, throughout the state and also uh, introducing me to other uh, small businesses that I have I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet. I'm glad that we have this partnership. I'm, I'm going to continue to work together with you to show that the taxpayers and the residents of Rhode Island the benefits of having both offices working together. Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, and we're looking forward to, uh, you know, having you uh, host this show weekly and I'll get out of your way. You know, I'm going to get out of your way and I'm going to I'm going to enjoy watching in. And I, I believe that Mark Haywood will come on first. So, Ben, just yeah. bring Mark on so that I can say hello to Mark and then I can get and then I can let the lieutenant governor do the work that she needs to do. Hi, Mark. Good morning. Good afternoon, Governor McKee. It's always a pleasure to see you. Um, as I tell you all the time, I miss you at our establishment. So hopefully we'll see you. We'll see you soon. I'm a, Mark, I'm on day 50. I'm counting 100 days, and then I'm and then I'm hopeful that we got everything going in a good direction, and I'll be able to join you over there on the on the first tee a couple times before the summer's over. I, I hope so, because I'm looking forward to seeing both you and Matt out there. Okay, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure. Um, okay. And, and, Lieutenant Governor Matos, just FYI, I'm a, I'm a big I'm a big protocol guy. So uh, if I'm talking to you under the protocol rules of protocol, I address you as governor. Um, as you would address the attorney general as general, I address you as governor. And we actually have a lot in common. So uh, a little did you know, I'm actually a, a third generation. Um, my grandmother was born in uh, Ribeir Gran San Miguel. Um, my mother, uh, she came here to the United States. Actually, she came on the last boat that came into Providence and, um, and uh, born and raised in uh, my mother and, and myself, born and raised in East Providence. But I served as a member of the city council and mayor of the city of East Providence from 1976 to 1982. Oh. So we have a little bit of, we do. of commonality. <laughs> Um, I know what it's like to deal with difficult members of city councils. <laughs> so, so um, but I have been in a leadership role here at the uh, United States Small Business Administration here in, here in Rhode Island since 1991. I served both uh, the White House as well as Department of the Interior, as well as uh, the Environmental Protection Agency uh, from 1982 to 1991 in Washington. DC, which was a great time. But right now, my role here, Governor, is um, is basically uh, helping small business community. And and Governor McKee knows probably more than anybody, uh, having been a small business owner, and he and I have had many chats about the about the need to support this community. When we look at when SBA is looking at everything right now, we're about a billion dollars in PPP round two. Um, the last number of loans that I saw, and I apologize because this, this was a a number from Friday and not and not this week, was almost um, we're almost at that point of ten thousand loans and a billion dollars for round two. We know that we did seventeen thousand loans and 1.7, almost $2.2 billion in the first round. So it, that's all going well. Our economic injury disaster loan has now expanded and it's uh, the agency is going out to everybody who got $150,000 governor. And we're saying, do you need more money? And no, that's gonna be expanded up to $500,000. And uh, Ben just put up the email address. If anybody is having any questions, any problems, any concerns as it relates to either PPP 
or to uh, the idle loans, please send us an email. Having said that, Governor, we're beginning to run out of money in the PPP side. Uh, while the Congress authorized us through May the 31st, the last time that I checked, we were less than $50 billion with a run rate of about 11 to $12 billion weekly. So that is beginning to wane. We had a, uh, I had a discussion this morning with our Rhode Island SBA lenders. They're not seeing um, uh, an enormous amount of requests for uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, um, but they are seeing some and we, we're encouraging them don't stop continue um get your applications in let's get it through the portal and let's get it funded but the other side of that governor that i want to talk about is the restaurant revitalization fund program that's going to be coming out very soon and we will be doing a series of seminars it's a pure grant program and we're going to be doing a series of seminars uh, we're doing one on our own this thursday but we're teaming up with all of the chambers of commerce, with the Rhode Island Hospitality Association, because basically this is a grant program. To and, and my biggest concern has always been, and Governor McKee will tell you, is restaurants and small retailers. We know that there are issues there. Um, I had a long conversation um, with Lisa Ranglin from the Rhode Island Black Business Association. We did Mondays with Mark. We'd like to invite you at some point in time to do I'll Mondays to. with Mark. Um, but we had communities of color, women and veterans will be the first three groups, restaurant groups to go uh, that will be approved. And we want people to be prepared to put their application in on day one. And the reason Governor why I say that is there are $26.8 billion, which is appropriated for this program, but it's a competitive program. So if, um, John Smith, who is outside of the group that I talked about, veterans, women, or individuals who are economically or socially disadvantaged. So John Smith is none of those. If he puts his application in on day one, even though he cannot be considered by law until day 21, when day 22 comes, he's the first one to be looked at. So we're asking people to be prepared. They can get up to $10, $10 million, $5 million for one establishment. And we want to do everything. It's I'm kind of like Charlie Brown and Lucy, you know, where Lucy always says, all I want is my fair share. All I want is what's coming to me. We want the Rhode Island restaurant and, and business community to get their fair share. So uh, governor, we're going to be doing a lot of a lot of programming over the next few weeks. And that's basically, that's basically my report for this week is go to our website, send us an email, get on one of the sessions that we're going to do. We're going to do about 20 of them over the next 10 days. So make sure that you're Rhode Island restaurants now. Uh, anybody who's, uh, it's NAICS code 72 is what we're looking at. Um, be prepared to put your application in as soon as possible. One final thing, Governor, is I know that there was a hiccup with the, um, uh, we call it SAVAG, because in government, we always have to have an acronym for everything, but it's the, but it's the shutted venue operators grant. Uh, I did a press conference with Senator Reid over at PPAC with Lynn Singleton. Um, there, is, there was a major issue as it relates to the website itself. That's still being worked on. We're a week into this. They're saying it could take another week to get all of the bugs out of it, but that will be coming down the line too. So for those individuals who are looking, who are who are eligible for the uh, shuttered venue operators grants, hang in there. Um, that is coming as well. But it's great to see you. Uh, you and I have been in a couple of places together. Oh, yes. Yes. But, um, I want. Um, I tell everybody I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. So anytime you need me, just pick up the phone. Thank you, Mark. I actually have one quick question before we sure. move on. Um, the program that you were talking about earlier that is for um, MBEs and WBEs and for the veterans, do they have to be state certified businesses or what is the requirement? No, it's basically a self-certification, but um, the, the critical part of this, Governor, is that when the Congress wrote the legislation, they wanted to give those who, and they use the 8A program guidelines, those who are socially and economically disadvantaged. And, and just FYI, 
um, un under the rule um, as being I'm Portuguese, I am eligible. Um, it is uh, because the way the rule is written is people of the Iberian Peninsula, which includes Spain, Portugal, um, all, all of the uh, South American countries, those are Hispanic, or it would be considered to be other Hispanic un under the rule. Um, th those individuals uh, of African Americans, uh, I'm also, by the way, pot Passamaquoddy Indian, so I, mean, I kind of got it all over the place. Um, but, but Native Americans and those individuals, you need to self-certify. But the most important thing is remember, this is a grant program. And um, for those who are, who are military, at some point in time, the agency can come back and say, listen, can we see your DD-214? So you, you, you please make sure, as we tell people all the time, to have all of the documentation that you need. And the good thing about this program, thank you for raising that, because you have, if they get a grant, Governor, they have until March of 2023 to spend the money. Oh. Oh. So, and... So the, the way it looks right now is whatever you had, let's say you had a million dollars in net revenue on in 2019, you had a half a million in 2020, and then you had $100,000 of PPP loans. You subtract out the two, 2020 and the, 2000, uh, and the PPP loans, you're eligible for a $400,000 grant. Grant. So oh, that's really good, really good. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, so much. Girl. So thank you so much, Mark. So we're going to be, um, you guys already uh, saw the information, the email, if you have any follow-up questions um, or to uh, reach us, okay? Just so, send it to uh, Rhode Island underscore DO at SBA.gov. Ben, thank are there you. any questions do you know for me? Um, There are, so... Yes, there are a couple questions, uh, some of which are being answered by the Lieutenant Governor's staff in the comments, um, which is always great. Also, officially, hello, uh, Lieutenant Governor. Um, I bet. It's great that we met We met uh, very briefly before the show. Yes. You're doing a wonderful job at this, um, and I can't wait to get to know you more. Uh, you. We, have, we have a question, Mark, about uh, from Diane about the travel industry, um, especially with the uh, do not travel uh guidance um to over 100 countries uh there i know they were discussing travel agencies to be included in the shutter venue grant have you heard any news on this i have not in fact um to, as of right now i still do not believe that they are included in the shuttered venue grant I, I i know that we've had a lot of discussions with the travel industry because they also said well we're also part of the hospitality industry and, and under PPP, we should get 3.5X. And, and I understand, but you have to remember, Congress writes the laws. We basically follow whatever the law is, and the Congress did not write those provisions, Governor, into the law. So if they are a travel industry, they are eligible for 2.5X um, for PPP, but they're not either part of the shuttered venue and they're not certainly not part of the uh, restaurant revitalization fund. Sorry um, about that. That's, and I have one more question that I'm going to ask uh, before we bring on Secretary Pryor. Can rideshare Uber Lyft drivers apply for PPP loans? Um, my understanding is that uh, the Uber drivers are 1099s or sole props. If you, if they are a 1099 and a sole proprietor, Ben, the answer is yes, they're eligible. Um, and 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 that's the one issue I think that that's been raised on a number of occasions. Remember, we, the, the rules change just slightly with 1099 sole props where you would be using line seven, not line 31 of, of the um, of the schedule C. So that's that's really what and the banks are all aware of it and they're working with people. So line seven, schedule C's, we're good to go. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so Mr. much. Secretary, it's good to see you. Secretary Good to see you, Mr. Lieutenant Governor, such a pleasure. Thank you, Secretary. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to uh, join with you in this conversation. We want to hear what is the latest, what's the news, what's going on uh, from the Commerce Department perspective. Our pleasure. First of all, Lieutenant Governor, congratulations once again. Congratulations on inheriting this very important forum right. that we've 
all valued very, very much, and we all enjoy. And you're already doing a fantastic job, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so um, first, some economic stats, and then some information on our administration's new relief grants. So first, economic stats. Um, we know that many small businesses continue to struggle. Uh, many businesses across our economy continue to struggle here in Rhode Island and for that matter across the country. Uh, we can be proud of the momentum that we have been generating. However, that doesn't mean that problems don't exist. They do. But I want to share this. Moody's has been ranking the states as to our economic recovery and they update weekly. Moody's the rating agency. Uh, Moody's has Rhode Island currently at 92% restoration of our economy to pre-COVID levels, 92%. The U.S. is only at 88%, so we're above the national average. Um, that's the highest percentage in all of New England. So we've had the best back-to-work restoration of economic activity in New England, in Rhode Island. Connecticut's right about at the national average. We're above it. Um, they're a smidge above it right now. Massachusetts is way below it. The U.S. is at 88%. Massachusetts is at only 79% restoration. Uh, and New York is at 77% restoration, which is the worst in the country. Uh, Massachusetts is close to the worst, right at the bottom. So what I, what I mean to say is Rhode, Rhode Island has done well in restoring economic activity to where we were pre-COVID oh. crisis. Now, having said that, one, many businesses continue to struggle and this is not good enough and there are disproportionate impacts upon the hospitality industry and many particular industries and the second thing i want to say is we're not satisfied with going back to where we were pre-covid even though we had hit all-time records as to number of jobs and had seen substantial decreases in our unemployment rate we want to be yet stronger uh, coming out of this crisis once we truly regain our momentum so uh, please don't misinterpret what I'm expressing as being satisfied with uh, where we're at. A long way to go, which is why we need measures like Governor McKee's relief grant program. Uh, so what this involves is that uh, Rhode Island has recaptured some of the CARES Act money that was not utilized. Uh, that's under the first round of stimulus funding that was not uh, utilized and deployed. And we have allocated for starters $20 million into a small business relief grant program where $5,000 uh, is available per business if a business meets certain limited criteria. That is to say, if the business's losses in 2020 were not made up for by grants that they received, and there's a $5,000 gap, in most instances, a $5,000 award can be made. Uh, we're pleased to report that um, we have, as of today, received almost $15 million in likely eligible applications. Um, so, Lieutenant Governor, that's a very strong uh, initial uh, pipeline yes. of applications. Yes, um, thank you. That sounds we, like you guys are doing an amazing job, Trivia Commerce. Uh, the entire administration team has been involved, but thank you. We're very, we're very grateful to our commerce team members, especially Hannah Moore, our chief of staff, and a number of team members who've been working night and day, no exaggeration. We will close the program when we reach approximately $20 million in applications, that is to say likely eligible applications from initial review. So um, uh, two things about that. One, it's not too late. So if you're a business that has been considering applying, um, the criteria to elaborate a bit you must have uh, less than $1 million in gross receipts in 2020, so smaller businesses. You must uh, have $5,000 of need, as I defined. You have a distinction in gross receipts in 2020 uh, that exceeds 5,000 and your grants didn't make up for it. There's a gap of $5,000 in some, in some way. If you meet those criteria, please check out commerceri.com um, that's our website, Lieutenant Governor, commerceri.com. It has all the information and the application is right there, clickable, and you can get right into it. It's very straightforward. We've been getting all kinds of reports to that effect. I want to give uh, credit not only to the commerce team, but to Brave River Solutions. 
Brave River is a local tech company that created that app. A Rhode Island company created that app that I think is better than many of the national companies works. We do have a, um, a back end that involves some support nationally, uh, but Brave River Solutions created that, that app for us and it's working beautifully. So it's not too late. And if you've gone online, if you're a small business, you've gone online and you do have a couple of questions or a lot of questions, uh, please know that the Rhode Island Society of CPAs is available to you, the Center for Southeast Asians, the Rhode Island Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Rhode Island Black Business Association, uh, and Rhodes Consulting and SCORE, a variety of organizations. You may be connected to them already, or you don't need to be. They can provide technical assistance to you. Go on to the commerceri.com website, and you can learn how to get connected to them, or you can just apply. If you try it, it might be very straightforward in your opinion, and you might get through it quickly. Um, 12 noon tomorrow, uh, we will have Zoom office hours where a small business can plug in and just get answers on the spot via Zoom. Where to find out about that? CommerceRI.com as well. Uh, so, Lieutenant Governor, that's the one-stop site for all information on this program. Um, and you can always call our helpline as well, which is helpfully displayed. That's the 521 helpline. Back to you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Secretary. I know Ben is as busy making sure that all that information is added in there, right, Ben? <laughs> ben does an amazing job. Thank you, Secretary. Um, I just have one question for you, and then I'll hand it back to the Lieutenant Governor. Will there be additional grant opportunities for small nonprofits uh, through mm -hmm. Commerce RI? Uh, I, I believe that it is unlikely that this particular program the small business relief program, which is designed for for-profit small businesses, will open up to nonprofits because we've had such a strong response and we will likely be oversubscribed. However, as we look to future rounds of federal stimulus, uh, the governor, lieutenant governor, and we will consider new programming. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Ben. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor. Please. Secretary, I have one more question. So you said there was 20 million for this uh, program um, and, and you were able to uh, recuperate 30 million. Uh, what is gonna happen with the other 10 million? Uh, we, we may in fact allocate a small amount of that additional money to the overflow, meaning some of the additional eligible applicants to ensure that we uh, fund some additional uh, small businesses. That's a determination that has yet to be made, but it is possible. In addition, uh, Governor McKee uh, and yourself and we are consulting on other programming, modest grants, um, grant amounts that may be available for other purposes. So among the, the things we're considering, are there ventilation moves that small businesses want to make to ensure they, that they maintain and enhance healthy environments? should we establish a small business grant program for that purpose? Should we in some way, shape or form incentivize more foot traffic to businesses as we restore the economy? Uh, and we're thinking about different ways of going about that, whether it's marketing or some other measures, stay tuned, those who are watching as the governor, lieutenant governor, and we discuss those options. I'll, I'll note this also, uh, we are very pleased that our vaccination pace has been so strong. We're nation leading among the top states in the country on vaccinations, as you know very well, Lieutenant Governor. Because of that terrific progress under Governor McKee and Dr. Alexander Scott and Tom McCarthy, we are looking at the possibility of announcing and enabling significant reopenings in the coming weeks. Uh, that is to say, we would make announcements in the near term uh, set of weeks and we would enable new reopenings uh, very, in the very short period of time. So uh, we want to accompany that with incentives and other supports for businesses that really help our, our, our small businesses get back on their feet. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Fryer, for all that information. Um, thank you for joining um, me, joining us today here for this um, information. Ben, is there any other question for Secretary Pryor? Uh, no, not at the not at the moment. Thank you, Secretary. 
Thank you very much, Ben. Lieutenant Governor, really appreciate it. Director Weldon, good to see you, sir. You as well, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Thank Governor, you. how are you? Hi, Ned. Uh, so let me officially introduce the acting director of the Department of Labor and Training, Matthew Weldon. So I'll always call you Mad. <laughs> so we have been working together for so long in uh, other capacities. I'm so glad to be able to uh, work with you now in this, uh, in this role. So tell us, how are things going at the Department of Labor? Well, first, you can call me Matt, and I will call you Governor. We'll, we'll create a new song based on that. Um, and we, yes, we've had a long working relationship, and that's great. And I look forward to continuing to serve with you. Um, things are going pretty well at DLT. You know, we've been busy, and we've been talking to everyone about that. Uh, the last year, or now I guess about 13 months, have been incredible. And the, I have to thank the hardworking staff here at DLT for helping us get through it. Um, the sheer volume of claims that we've dealt with has been something that no one could ever have imagined. Uh, and I remember sitting here about 13 months ago thinking, this won't last that long. So we'll do everything we can and then get back on track. And we were in a pretty good space back then. Uh, and, you know, I was wrong. Here we are. We're still dealing with it. And just when we think we have a handle on things, everything changes again. And so one of the things that we've been dealing with uh, lately is that because we're a year into the pandemic, the people's claims have started to expire. In fact, now on April 21st, we're pretty well beyond that, which is good. Um, a month ago, it was pretty rough. And what I mean by that is this, if you have a regular unemployment claim, and it's even if it was COVID related, but it was not from the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, or we have, you know, it's called PUA, if you had just a regular claim, those claims live for one year. And after one year, the switch effectively is turned off. Now, because we've done a lot with messaging, the certification system that you use to request a payment tells you when it's your last payment and that you need to file a new claim that week in order to get paid. Unfortunately, a lot of people didn't file a new claim right away because they thought it would automatically happen or some people online told them, you don't have to, it'll be automatic, don't worry about it. Um, and you know what we've been telling everyone is, Every claim is different and you need to look at the message that you get because it's tailored to you and your issue. And so if you're told to refile a claim, go ahead and file that claim again. The good thing is many people now have done that. And every week we're working on all those new claims to get people right back into the payment status that they were in before. It is possible that it would take two weeks. If that's the case, we will pay both weeks at the same time when we catch you up. Right now we're in much better place than we were a month or six weeks ago. Not that we couldn't handle it then, but the workload was much higher. Uh, and, you know, we're doing fairly well. We're seeing fewer claims come in, which is good. And we're seeing fewer people, a little bit, uh, request a payment every week. And so last week, about 67,000 people still re got paid. That's still a lot of people. In a state with a million people, that's a lot of people. Um, and so one complaint or concern I hear a lot is, how come I can't call and get someone on the phone? And what I would say is because of the volume and because of the number of calls we get every day, you know, it can be difficult, but you need to try many, many times. Try late in the day, try on Saturday morning. The phone number is right in front of you at 401-415-6772. And one thing I'm trying to urge is call if you're not getting your payment or if you need to file over the phone because you absolutely cannot do it online. Online is better. If it won't work for you, do it on the phone. If you have general questions, I urge you to go to our website at dlt.ri.gov and poke around because there's a lot of information available. Also, keep an eye on all of our social media accounts. Uh, those are, are accounts that mostly have been verified at this point and will be if they haven't been yet. Keep, keep an eye on those because we try to put out um, up-to-date messaging to let people know what they should be doing. Really look for DLT branded information. Because everyone's claim is different, it's hard to get advice from someone else. They're not in the same situation that you're in. So please look to us. We'll try to help. The federal programs, which are the extra $300 a week, the pandemic unemployment, which are claims that were uh, developed for people that don't typically qualify for unemployment, um, and the federal extension of regular unemployment, were all extended to September 4th in Rhode Island. In most states in the country, it'll be on September 4th when they expire. If Congress picks that up again, then we'll work to continue those programs going forward. Uh, but for now, it will last until September 4th. If you are on a pandemic unemployment assistance claim, 
you did not need to refile the claim. We were able to adjust that on your behalf. I could spend an hour talking about why, but we don't have that kind of time. I would suggest people go online, go to our website, look for information, and we'll try to be helpful. A couple more things I want to point out. WorkShare. We've talked about WorkShare with this community quite a bit. WorkShare is a program that allows you to uh, dial down some of the work for some of your workers if you're a small business or any business. Um, and they can get partial pay from you and be on a partial unemployment claim. The good thing about WorkShare, other than the fact that it's a good way to keep in touch and keep uh, a relationship with your existing staff that you know, you trust, you have trained and invested in, um, it also is being covered 100% by the federal government right now through September 4th. That means no charges to your account. That means uh, they're picking up the entire tab and WorkShare payments also come with that extra bonus of $300. If anybody has any questions about WorkShare, go to our website and you can find all the information that you need. Right now, we still have about 139 active WorkShare plans. That means 139 companies are working with us on WorkShare. It was over 225. Uh, those companies have now hopefully gone back to work. In a typical month or year, it's about 12. And so you can see how busy we remain compared to other times in the past. And finally, I'll talk just for a second about unemployment fraud. We've talked about that quite a bit as well. Okay. The good news about uh, the work that we've done is it's working. And yes. it's, over the last year, we have upgraded our system. We've introduced new technology. We've put new processes in place. We've trained staff to work on this new kind of fraud called imposter fraud. We have an 18-year experienced uh, criminal prosecutor that I hired here at DLT who's leading our fraud effort who uh, is advising our team on how to move forward and is our conduit to the law enforcement community that we work so closely with. Um, the good thing is last week, all of our tools you know, that we use to filter claims give us a low number of claims that we should stop as suspected fraud, which means the things that we're doing are working, like multi-factor authentication. When Now when you file a claim, it, it asks you if you want to be called or receive a text to verify who you are. This is not new technology, but this is government, and sometimes government has to catch up. We've done those things. I'm proud that in my short tenure at, in the leadership role here, we've made some significant changes. And I believe going forward, we're going to see even more to come. Uh, at this point, I'll just stop because I know I went on too long. And I'll take any questions. I just want to say um, DLT has done a lot to improve technology in a short period of time. Um, I remember when I first started working at the state in I realized that most of the things that I thought we had already available, we we actually didn't have, and how Excel becomes your best friend. <laughs> yeah. I, I learned to love Excel. <laughs> but thank you so much, Matt, for all that information, uh, Director Weldon. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I just want to put another plug for uh, the website, the BLT website. I always go into that website, and there's so many resources in there. I spend some time there um, using the, the website and, and discovering all the resources that, are, that we have available there. And also the WorkShare program, this is a, just a great way to help you um, to get by until your business is full to capacity. Um, make sure you look into that option also. So thank you so much, Director. Ben, do we have any questions for the Director? I have a couple questions, uh, Director okay. Weldon. Always great to see you, Matt. Um, so number one, I just received a claim for someone that does not work for our company. Should I just mail it back or what do I do? On something like that, it would be a big help to me if you wrote return to sender on the envelope and sent it back. If you've already opened it and you don't mind mailing it back, that would be great. Um, let's see. Uh, I will get the information about a, uh, Lieutenant Governor email, uh, situation. I do not have that information at the, at the moment. Uh, it's day three for the staff. So we'll, yes. we'll, we'll get that, we'll get that info <laughs> for you. Um, but, uh, go to the call center and like Matt said, call late in the day, call on Saturday mornings. Those are the best times to get through. Um, but we will, we will work on that. Uh, and then let's see. Um, we had one more question. Sorry, it was in a different spot. I, uh, let's see. Are claims retroactive for those who never received PUA payment initially and are now working? Um, okay, so I don't know exactly what, what's being asked. So what I'll say is this. The federal government puts tight controls on how far back we can dial a claim back to. If you filed a claim after December 27th of 2020, I can only go back as far as December 6th. I cannot go back to last summer or last spring. 
uh, no, under any circumstance. The federal government won't allow it. And if I were to do that, those charges would be denied by the federal government. So we can't do that at all. If you want to file now, I can go back until December 6th. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thanks, Governor. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Great seeing you. All right. So next, we have Chris Parisi. He's the founder of the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition. And Chris has been doing a great work. He was working with the uh, current governor, Governor McKee, uh, for a long time, making sure that we are providing uh, the resources that the small business community need, and making sure that we're listening, listening to what the small business are telling us about what they need. So with that, I want to hear from Chris how things are going, Chris. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Welcome aboard. You've been doing a great Thank job you. so far. I don't know, uh, Governor. She's been doing almost, I may say, maybe better than your first time. I don't know. I don't want to say it. I think, like I already said, Sabina's got a lot of experience that uh, that I really uh, rely on. So she's been doing great. i just been listening in. I get to uh, actually welcome her on a call with all the former Lieutenant Governors this afternoon. Yes. Well, I've reached out to me uh, before, all the time I was Lieutenant Governor and beyond. So, but Chris, yeah, I just wanted to come on basically just to say, uh, you know, as, on this handoff to Sabina, you're in really good hands, Chris. And, uh, and, and your work is extraordinary. Uh, and we not only during the pandemic, but as we go get out of the pandemic, and we're going to have some very positive news on Thursday in terms of how we're accelerating this vaccination percentage that's going to allow us to get, uh, you know, very much open. Uh, you know, we're shooting for a Memorial Day uh, that is, uh, you know, very strong now instead of the 4th of July. So we've moved this up about a month because of the, the great work that is happening on the vaccination. So use this forum to get more and more people vaccinated. That's that's really what we want to do. Use this forum for, as you used, uh, you know, as in the past to organize a small business is in a real strong way. and. And I just want to just thank you for that publicly, Chris. That's why I wanted to come on. And I'll, I'll get out of the way and I'll come back after your interview. But I just want to let you know, nice handoff here between uh, the Lieutenant Governor and, uh, and, and myself and you. And, um, and you know that one of the things is everybody who has my phone number still has my phone number. <laughs> we're, we're, well, I'm not going anywhere. Actually, we're just having a meeting how we can actually make our office a little more accessible than it has been in the past as well. So a lot of work to do, but... Nothing more important than right now for our reopening our economy than our small businesses, and I still believe that to be true. So take it away, Sabina. Uh, thank you thank so much. Thank you, Governor. Uh, and I'll listen in. Ben, you get rid of me. All right. We're going to listen from Chris now. Chris, you're, not, you're getting me into trouble. You're telling the governor that I'm doing better. Doesn't even do that. <laughs> well, thank you, Governor. I got to say, the governor is... He's a he's a very humble, um, yes. you know, great leader, and I want to thank the governor as well. You were a lifeline for um, the small businesses when you started these town halls over a year ago. You know, you gave us a voice and a direct line to our great government leaders that we really never had before. I can't believe. Uh, Ben, it's a, it's been a, it's been a year that we've been doing these live town halls with the likes of Mark Hayward, Matt Weldon, Liz Tanner, Secretary Pryor, and uh, we wouldn't be where we're at without you, Governor. So thank you and congratulations uh, to you, uh, Lieutenant Governor. Um, the small business community looks forward to to work with you, fighting for the heart of our economy. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm going to share some insights on a few issues and a few industries uh, from the most meetings, from most recent meetings, the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition had with our members. Again, we're a nonprofit advocacy group fighting for our small businesses, giving them a voice and connecting them with their government leaders. And one thing that we were able to be a part of is the Small Business Relief Grant Program. So hats off to the team at Commerce for administering a successful program. Uh, from Secretary Pryor, including us in the process from the start and, and the great staff that he has working with him, especially uh, Hannah Moore. So we were clear, the coalition was clear with what we envisioned with this program, making it simple, equal, and really focusing on the small businesses that are really struggling to pay essential bills like rent. Um, and this program did just that. And you just heard from Secretary Pryor how it was successful. Um, and make sure you apply today, this very 
moment, go to commerceri.com slash relief grant. And if you did not apply yet, it's still open. So take advantage before it closes out, um, before the 20 million or so money runs out. We heard positive feedback. Uh, great job. So the second issue I want to talk about is the hiring issue. So this was heavily discussed, and it's really a hiring crisis. Um, it's been incredibly difficult across multiple industries hiring workers. Uh, business is finally picking up. Small business is scraping by to make end meets, and now they can't even hire the help in order to operate their business. It's especially hard for the smaller businesses, like the smaller restaurants. They can't afford quite the tactics that larger groups are able to do to attract workers. Um, and, and obviously, you know, that's because, you know, people want to stay at home with the children, stay at home with the elderly, fear of COVID in the workplace. But it's also that federal bonus of three hundred dollars per week. So we're looking forward to working with the General Assembly, working with uh, yourself and, and the governor and the administration and other small business organizations to come together and figure out a solution swiftly so that we can solve this hiring uh, crisis. Um, so that was a, that was a really hot topic I wanted to share, and, and obviously a minimum wage is, is another one. But let's focus on a few issue, a few industries. One of them is agriculture and fisheries. So not only do these industries produce jobs, right, more than fifteen thousand from agriculture and plant based industries alone, and they're a big part of the ocean state's economy, contributing two point five billion annually. Um, it's also at the center of our food security issue in Rhode Island. Um, you know, Governor Matos, I know you're aware one in every four Rhode Islander lacks adequate food. Um, and these are the small businesses, this industry that can really support and, and have a big impact on that. So we need to support these small businesses, listen to them, and, and we need to bring them into the fold to ensure that we hear how, you know, things like minimum wage, the climate bill and other issues affect their live, livelihood. So I wanted to highlight them as well as the wedding and event industry. These folks were hit one of the hardest during the pandemic. And even though the calendar turned, you know, they're still struggling as our eyes, one of uh, the strictest states when it comes to weddings in New England. And I preface that with Secretary Pryor and the governor just mentioned, you know, they're looking to uh, release and reduce the restrictions, which is great news and, and music to the ears of these industries. Um, you know, the problem is, is, is the timing of everything, right? So when you have New Hampshire lifting their mask mandates, when you have Connecticut lifting all restrictions except masks in May, we're having, let's say, couples leave and, and cancel their weddings in Rhode Island to do it in our neighboring states. And, and we don't want to have at that, obviously. So we're looking forward to um, the uh, a recent and uh, soon to become announcements and hopefully the wedding and event industry is uh, part of that discussion. So uh, then there's just a few other ones like the travel industry, the State Department imposing further restrictions on international travel. So we got to figure out how to help them. You heard um, Director Hayward talk about how you know they weren't able to be included according to you know Washington. They weren't included in some of these programs. So how can we help them out and and how can we do other things? Just like hey, if we're outdoors and you're and you have a fitness center, do we really need to be wearing masks outdoors, right, when we're working out? Um, so so those are some of the issues that the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition has been hurting. Uh, really positive when it comes to the grant program and really positive when it comes to the vaccination efforts led by Governor McKee, number one in the country, right, yes. for vaccinating uh, over, was it 70 years old, fully vaccinated? So, I mean, that vaccination and open up the economy, those are the things that are really going to help our small businesses, the backbone of our economy. So uh, thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor. That's that's all I have for today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. And, and so good that you're mentioning the vaccination because we do have vaccines appointments available. We got to remind that to everyone that is watching right now. Um, we are fortunate, thanks to the leadership of the governor uh, with his team, Tony Silva, making sure that we prioritize the vaccination. We are at a stage right now in which we have vaccines appointments available at different sites. So make sure that you sign up, make sure that you get your employees to sign up for a vaccine. Okay. So cool. uh, with that, I just want to turn it back to the governor. Uh, so tell us how we did in this first one. 
Governor McKee. Yes, so thank you, Lieutenant Governor Matos. We love that, Matos. You're doing a great job. And wasn't that great listening to Chris Parisi and hearing about the small business? Oh, it was really good. Yeah. They are organized, they're ready to go, and uh, we just got to respond. But uh, thank you for reminding people get vaccinated. Uh, the, the numbers in this week are going to be extraordinary. We received extra doses, I think, because the state of Rhode Island is doing such a great job, as you mentioned with Tony Silver and Tom McCarthy and, and Reamer and the, and the General Callahan and others, and along with Dr. Alexander Scott. So we're the state that is ready, and I think that we will uh, be aggressively uh, moving uh, to op reopen our economy, reopen our schools, because we got all our teachers vaccinated and all the child care uh, workers vaccinated. So we're in a position to be, um, as I've been pointing out, to be, you know, incrementally flexible, create this incremental flexibility, move it so safety is a key, but we do not want to move backwards like Michigan is right now doing. We don't want to move backwards then anyway. So if from a small, because I own a small business, I own a small business. And a number of people who are making these decisions have never run a small business. So they don't understand how critical two weeks is or one week is. So that's why we got to keep on doing this very, now I think they're at aggressive incremental flexibility. But with you at the helm here at the Lieutenant Governor's office, uh, we're going to really work together as I started off the program. So um, thank you and congratulations to completing your first call like this. Thousands of people are going to look in on this, on this program. And, and they're going to know that you're, you are a great supporter of the people of all 39 cities and towns. So thank you for doing this, Sabina. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for your leadership on starting this um, com communication, direct communication with our small business community. I want to thank all of you for joining us today on uh, this information um, in, for a small business information session. I think it was successful for the first one that I'm doing. I'm looking forward to getting your feedback and your questions. Please make sure you contact us. Ben is going to be getting access to uh, the emails and he's going to provide that for our next one next week. With that, I just want to, once again, I want to thank Governor McKee for joining us today and for his vision and his leadership. Uh, with that, Ben, um, it's all yours. All right, thank you very, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna have uh, the emails and the phone number and stuff. Um, uh, so thank you, wonderful, wonderful job, and um, and it was wonderful to meet you. And uh, and that's it for today. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ben. Bye. Thanks. Bye.